the 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 body mutilations, the beheadings, the dismemberment, the the human shields, all that. Uh, it was crazy, and I remember one day the uh, we stopped getting uh, stuff delivered to our firebase. What is a firebase? Is a base camp, and all the workers we had coming to help us, local nationals, they their heads arrived in a bag outside of our gate. And so getting people to come help the Americans was extremely difficult. They sent all the heads of your local workers to your front gate? Holy shit. How many heads? Did you know these guys? Did not. I'm just a dude. I'm still like living in La La Land because we're waiting for the mission. I'm just wondering why we're not getting a water supply. I'm wondering why, you know, this thing hasn't been delivered. I'm just a dude. You know, I'm waiting with my scratch off phone card, waiting in line for an hour and a half to use the fucking morale phone because I'm still living in a, in a, in a, in a reality that I don't even know where I'm in and where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for tasking. But all these big things are happening. And at the time, I was a low level guy. I wasn't really involved. You just hear the stories. Then you start what the fuck does that brief look like? Hey, if you guys are wondering where our local workers are, their heads have all been chopped off and they're in packages at the front door. Well, back then, dissemination of information wasn't really a thing. And that's my perspective. That's my view on things. <clears throat> and I say that because when we finally got the green light to go in, it was March 26, 2004. And we are, we are tasked with, we are pushing through the city of Fallujah and we're clearing it. With how many people? Our entire battalion. So four companies, my Marine math is not that great when it comes to the breakdown of all those outfits. Hundred. Hundreds. Two hundred. Multiple, multiple battalions. So there's other, multi, there's other units because I believe Fusion was a four by four grid square or two by two, something of that nature. And there was, my battalion was the main effort. So other adjacent battalions were doing other combat missions to support our push through the city. So they were all more on the outskirts, kind of like funneling people towards us. So the plan was. And so we stage at like 02, 03 in the morning on our camp. Um, but the night prior, my platoon commander comes in and he's like, everyone's going to write a, their death letter. Jesus Christ. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I got goosebumps even thinking about that. Because at the time, I didn't know. I saw some guys get strapped on wounds. I heard the stories of the heads. I seen and hear the explosions. But then I'm told to write my own death letter. And I'm like, what do you say? What do I do? And I had a girlfriend at the time, so I wrote a letter to her. My parents were in my life. I wrote a letter to my parents. And we all turned our letters over to our platoon commander. And that's when I knew shit was fucking real. Do you still have those letters? I don't. What'd you write? I really don't remember. I wrote what an 18 year old kid probably would. I was motivated at the time, so I probably wrote some shit like, I'm dying for, you know, I fought for my country, I fought for my team. I love you guys, I miss you. You think your parents still have that letter? No, my parents got, my parents got more than a letter uh, later. Okay. Um, well, we'll wait for that. Yeah, it's, it's coming up. Right on. Um, I mean, that's fucking demoralizing. Yeah, it was pretty demoralizing. But at the same time, I, we didn't, I didn't know any different. None of us knew. No one knew. And I get it. Some people might be thinking, oh, dude, it's war. What did you expect? But no, that's... I've been to war. This, this was hell. This was... This was something that shaped my life for the rest of my life. As long as I live, I will never forget that. I'll, I won't remember all the details. I still don't remember all the details. I don't remember all the phase lines. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I remember the feeling. 
and I have never been able to shake it ever since. Um, so we load up in these trucks. I'm in a seven ton, those big, you know, very clunky, non-quiet diesel, 18th military tactical vehicles. And we're all smoking cigarettes, light discipline. We're still on base because the drive is only like 10 minutes. The drive from your DVD player, your shitty fucking food, and the thing you call a bed, you're 10 minutes away from hell. And it's just outside your gate. And the drive was that, 10 minutes. 10 minutes of fucking silence and pure fucking darkness. And I just remember feeling like the rumbles of the truck. I smell the, the, the JP8, the fuel. You know, you just, you can feel, you can feel that energy for all those fucking souls that are there. These fucking dudes, you know, like you can feel it. The silence, that bonding that speaks no words. That mindset that has no, it has no category. It just is what it is. And only situations can bring that about. And we stopped right outside the city. It's the clover leaf. It was like this highway there's a highway right outside of it and there's this clover leaf of a highway like entrance points on ramps off ramps and we, we we park outside of that and we unload and it's just dead quiet it's pitch black but there's these these street lights and we're all like what's going on you know what are we doing here like what's the next phase what's the next step and you hear gunshots and a few of us to include myself we like duck well it's our guys shooting out these streetlights, which it's not as easy as movies make, especially with 5.56. Five, and it, it took a little couple shots to like, to make these things happen. And then it got super quiet. And then uh, my uh, team leader comes up and he's like, hey, we're tasked to do Overwatch and push forward. I'm like, okay, I was a point man. That was my fucking job. I was good at it. Um, so not only am I, Navigating to a destination, which we didn't have one. Uh, my head's on a swivel. I have to see everything and relay that back. Because it's our mission to provide information to our battalion, to our commanders, our subordinate commanders, so they can create and determine what's intelligence and what needs to be action and what needs to happen. And right on the outskirts of the city was this unconstructed building. And I remember making my way up there. And it's beautiful. The sun's peaking. There's that smell of unknown, a new country. And it was so peaceful and quiet. It was insane. So nobody. We slowly start to push up. We're still remaining in an overwatch position. And the IFABs come up these small Mercedes Jeeps and our weapons guys, our weapons company guys, the guys with the Mark 19s, the 50 cal, the 240s were mounting on these little things. And I remember they push up in an L shape uh, to provide support. So the infantrymen can continue to push up and bound as they were trained to do. Bound from one place to the next place. And we're gonna clear this village, this, this city. And then like that, an IFAB just disappears. And, uh, it blew up, like literally like right in front of us. And I was like, holy fuck, this is real. Like I always knew it was real. I heard the stories, I saw the explosions, I fucking saw the holes in the bodies, but now I'm there in the thick of it. There's no chow time, there's no break, there's no pee break, this is it. And it's like maybe seven in the morning, eight in the morning, the day has just begun. And that doesn't stop anybody. We push the fight. We continue to push. Now sporadic gunshots start happening. Now we have, we have ground elements that are maneuvering. You know, Now we're in this hustle and bustle. There was no martial law. There was no stability operations. This is a fight now. And uh, still not to the full capacity of what was awaiting us in Fallujah. And at the time, to me, as a point man on a sniper team, I, don't, I didn't think there was a lot of planning. Uh, I'm not saying I was a master planner back in the day, but there, I learned about phase lines later in life. 
And there was no phase lines during this. There was no limits of advance. There was no, no real plan. It was, hey, go here, move forward. Um, it was kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall, see what stuck. And so we get tasked again. We're like, hey, you guys push forward, establish overwatch. You guys push forward, relay back to us, and the, the grunts will push forward also. We're like, okay. So that's what we did. And now we're getting targeted. Uh, I find myself on another rooftop. And as a point man, I'm holding rear security, baby. I'm watching that door leading up to the stairwell. Not a fun job. My friends are shooting. They're engaging. They're seeing people with guns. You know, they're doing their job. And I'm like, watching this door. And then I realized watching this door became very interesting because I started to get shots all around my head. You know, pew, 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 hitting the wall. So I'm like ducking. I'm like, shit. So now I put that in perspective, like, yo, bro, you might be holding security in the rear, dude, but like, you can't just hold security in the rear. You got to hold security all over the place. You have to be observant. Is your head past that, that, you know, ledge, you know, what is your guys doing? Have you looked back to see what they're doing? And like, I'm learning all these things I've never learned in training. Damn. And, uh, not like I was not trained properly, but there's only one way to learn certain things and you have to collectively put it together. That's why you know, investing in training is extremely important. Well, back in the day, we trained the best we could with the funds we had and the knowledge and experience that we had. Well, you know, I can't tell you how many TTPs, tactics, techniques and procedures came out of, and SOP, standard operating procedures, came out of Fallujah alone. Yeah. Because tactics that you thought you were gonna do, we were still doing this Cold War era tactics. Well, that shit does not work in an urban environment like that, where that has been waiting for you, waiting to dominate your soul. Um, literally waiting to kill you. There was kill houses set up all over the place. There was tunnel systems, there was um, rat lines, there were loopholes, there were channel uh, walls knocked down to basically shoot in one house and they could run through all these other walls so no overhead uh, aerial platform was gonna see them. You know, you weren't gonna see these guys. You were gonna hear shots and they were gonna disperse because they're fighting a guerrilla warfare. You're fighting a true adversary. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.